Hey everybody, some gadget guy here with the first BlackBerry I've reviewed in years. So let's get this box out of the way and take a look at the classic on AT&T. Now call me old fashioned, but I'm actually pretty stoked to be reviewing a phone with a hardware keyboard again. Into some quick size comparisons, here's the classic next to a Galaxy S5. Here's the classic next to an LG G3. Rounded corners abound next to the HTC One M8. It's absolutely dwarfed by a Galaxy Note 4. And it's another phone joining the metal and plastic look alongside the Lumia Icon slash 930, which compares very similarly to the slightly chunky Nokia in terms of overall girth. Walking around the hardware, we have the 720p square touchscreen display above navigation controls. I miss having these kinds of hardware buttons on Android, as I liked having a dedicated menu key. But we also have call and contacts, hang up and home, a back button, and an optical trackball selector, which works in tandem with the touchscreen. And below that strip, we have the signature keyboard that most people identify with BlackBerry devices. For Four rows of tic-tac keys that look like they'd be too small, but end up feeling pretty natural when typing out even longer messages. The right side of the phone features our split volume rocker with a button in the middle to launch BlackBerry's search and digital assistant feature. The left side is where we'll find split doors locked by pin tools for the SIM and micro SD card slots. The bottom of the phone houses the micro USB port and some pretty solid audio hardware. We have a separate speaker test on this channel, of course, but spoiler alert, you can always count on BlackBerry for high quality business grade audio. And on the top of the phone, we have a respectable 3.5 millimeter headset jack and a power button flanked by a pair of microphones. The overall feel is a happy throwback to some of the best examples of premium BlackBerry devices of old. They say real men like curves, but I was always a fan of something a bit more bold. G get it? Curve? Bold? <laughs> Anywho, this is terrific hardware with excellent attention to detail, fit, and finish. I'm a big fan of the textured backplate, helping you keep a grip on this thing even if you have sweaty paws like I do. It's a beautifully balanced piece of kit with a nice heft to it, and it fits in the hand comfortably, providing easy access to the whole device even when using it one-handed. As a general nitpick, I still don't like top-mounted power buttons, but there are numerous ways to activate the screen on a BlackBerry, so I learned pretty quickly to just stop using it. The display is bright and colorful, and when working in this mid-range price bracket, it's packing an appropriate number of pixels. The resolution feels low when using the Classic for multimedia, especially when letterboxing video and apps. But as the device feels more focused towards communication and productivity, it's more than capable for keeping you connected. Performance is pretty snappy. Like Windows Phone and iOS, BlackBerry is focused on optimization, and lower power specs like the older Qualcomm dual-core CPU do a generally good job of moving you throughout the UI. This is the first BlackBerry OS 10 device I've had the pleasure of playing with, and it's been an interesting transition. Like Microsoft moving from Windows Mobile to Windows Phone, BlackBerry needed to create a UI that was aesthetically pleasing, but one which wouldn't get them sued by Google and Apple for copying design elements. Unlike Microsoft, however, I think BlackBerry has retained far more of the older BlackBerry DNA in its solution here. There are pros and cons to this approach, as stylistically I think you run into design conflicts between pretty menu animations, app icons, and a UI which still depends on a heavy amount of text. A few small schisms between what we all now expect from a modern smartphone and what a BlackBerry should look like. BlackBerry's core services are top notch. I miss having a one stop shop for all of my messaging needs. Jarring at first to have everything in one place, but nice not having to swap between different apps for general communication. I'm just getting back into BBM, so I can't comment too much on using that, trying to track down my pals who still use it. But the calendar and contacts apps are simple, streamlined affairs bringing you immediately to the information you need to access efficiently. The mapping application was a lot better than I thought it would. Be. I still prefer Google and Here Maps, but this is a close third with smooth scrolling performance, voice prompts for turn by turn nav, and a great database for points of interest. And all this goes hand in hand with the BlackBerry Assistant. Remind me to pick up milk in three hours. A long press on that side button brings up a speech prompt, which allows you to search, set reminders and calendar appointments, open apps, and voice dial. Where is the closest pizza place? It doesn't have the plucky charm of Cortana, but in terms of functionality, it's a competitive offering to what Microsoft, Google, and Apple are building into their phones. Searches take a bit longer on this low power hardware, but it's still terrific functionality. BlackBerry's advanced interactions bring usage customization to organic movements like muting a call by flipping the phone over, sending the phone into a low power state when the screen is face down, and keeping the screen on when it detects you're holding it. Remember how I said I don't like top mounted power buttons? Well, there's a setting to wake the phone up when you lift it up. The camera app is simple. We've got some basic customizations for aspect ratio, a timer, panorama, flash control, and an auto HDR mode that can help correct for lighting conditions. But that's about it. 
Again, I'd recommend checking out our full camera review for more info, but this shooter likely won't excite folks that really want to get into creation and composition. The slide up and right gesture which drops you into your messaging hub makes a bit less sense here than on touchscreen only devices. As the screen is smaller, I found I would occasionally activate this by accidentally scrolling through the web browser. Even after using the phone for a couple weeks, I'd still miss the gesture if I hit too close to the optical trackpad. For the most part, hitting the call end button to take me home and then sliding from left to right would more consistently get me to my messages. I just don't really need as many screen gestures when I have an insanely customizable keyboard to play with. Folks, I know the smartphone market as a whole has pretty much decided for us that smartphones should all be slabs of glass with on-screen keyboards, but I really have missed all the funky phone designs that incorporated hardware keys. I'm not really faster on hardware than on software, but it's a more comfortable setup for me to type out longer messages, which doesn't feel top heavy like writing out messages on a phablet. And I love the satisfying little clicks and tactile feedback you get when punching out a reply to a text. Plus, it's always there. Your screen doesn't shift items around to slide the keyboard into place, and BlackBerry has done a terrific job of implementing the old shortcuts into BlackBerry OS X. Hold down the letter B to launch the browser, or C to compose a message. Compared to how most smartphones organize icons and shortcuts, this is much faster functionality, and there's a good chunk of the keyboard available for users to add their own app action and speed dialing shortcuts. It's an excellent example of a feature you just can't replicate with software. Phone call performance is top tier. Earpiece is punchy and loud. Callers never complained about being able to hear me thanks to a healthy dose of noise reduction. The aforementioned loudspeaker is very good and overall network performance was excellent. Like classic Nokia and Motorola gear, BlackBerry does an excellent job of building in radio management hardware and I was getting competitive data speeds on AT&T's LTE. Battery performance for me was also upper mid-pack. Used mostly for email, social media, taking a few phone calls, some navigation, and listening to music on my SD card, I had no problems making it past dinner time and into the evening. The lower power CPU and lower resolution display thankfully don't tax the 2500 milliamp hour battery as hard as some rivals in this price tier. It's still a charge it every day kind of phone, but I was surprised by the standby times. Connected to Wi-Fi, but with the screen off and in its low power state, I only lost about 8% of my battery over a 24 hour period while it still kept up with my many notifications. While the battery is non-removable, which is kind of a bummer, and is pulling the battery to reset the phone still a thing with Blackberries? I don't even know. Happily, there is Qi wireless charging built into the classic, and popping it down on my old Nokia charge plate delivered slightly faster than trickle charging to the phone without having to plug it in. In terms of hardware, aside from the camera, the only nitpicky criticism I can really level at this thing is the split pin tool SD and SIM card doors. Like my complaint, with the Lumia 1520, I think I'd really just prefer one door, like on the Lumia 2520 tablet, or completely separate doors that fit more securely, like on the HTC One M8. It's a tiny little smudge here on the Classic for its otherwise exceptional build quality. But I cringe whenever my thumb or finger runs across a metal edge which doesn't quite lay flush with the rest of the phone. For software, the criticism isn't quite so nitpicky. The native app situation is not great. Scrolling through the different categories in the BlackBerry World Store, there are a ton of gaps and missing services which we would take for granted on iOS or Android, and it's even more precious than the situation on Windows Phone. You can install Android apps on BlackBerry through the Amazon App Store or by sideloading an APK, but it's an imperfect solution to use a ported app, especially for the classic square screen. Very little Android software utilizes the real estate properly, and you end up with a lot of letterbox. Boxing. Seeing the struggle Microsoft faces in courting developers, I'm not sure what would improve the situation here for BlackBerry. So, where's that leave us with the BlackBerry Classic? This is exceptional hardware with a laser focus on the communication basics. If your main reason for owning a smartphone is tackling email and text messages, managing your appointments with the occasional foray into Twitter and Facebook, this phone makes a lot of sense. And it's one of the best phones I've used in a while for, you know, actually making and receiving phone calls. For that style of use, it's an easy, premium feeling phone to recommend, which punches way above its $420 off contract price. Where this outlook is a lot less rosy is when we look at the apps and services not supported on this platform, photo and video creation, multimedia playback, and gaming. Moving beyond, excellent communication features, those folks who live every other aspect of their lives out of their phone might struggle with what the classic has to offer. All that being said, using this phone for the last couple weeks only reinforces my belief that we can always benefit from more competition in the smartphone arena. And while I don't expect them to occupy a large slice of the smartphone pie, 
I'm really happy to see that BlackBerry is still in the game. I'll of course leave some links below this video for more info on the classic and where you can shop it online. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there sharing my reviews with your family, friends, and on social media, so keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.